welcome, welcome back to another episode of the T.O.P., the Outsiders Podcast. It's me, J.G., with the man, me, Mr. Mean Dean, and yeah, Tom E. Guns is nowhere to be found. Have yeah. you heard anything from him today? I haven't heard shit from Tommy. Well, I know the last time I talked to him, he was pretty pissed off. Not at us, but it, I don't know. It just seems like... Something's going on, so hopefully we can catch him here before the end of the show. Well, man, I just hope everything's safe with our man Tommy Guns, man, and get here when you can, man. I mean, yeah. All right, so hey, what's up, brother? How you been this week, man? Well, you know, just chilling. I know you watched some Impact. You want to talk about that? Yeah, man, let's go ahead and talk about the Impact, man. Uh, uh, so, if you guys can't notice, this is going to be a little out of our norm. Usually, we're talking about the WWE, but, hey, we wanted to do things a little different, man. I've been catching a lot of impact here. And, hey, let me go ahead and ask you a question, man. Do you think Jeff Jarrett can really bring TNA back to its glory days? Mm, not with the roster they have now. I mean, you said it yourself. Moose is one of the most ridiculous characters out there. Uh, you got some good guys in there, like uh, like in the last episode, you mentioned the Wolves. What else? I mean, yeah, what else? <laughs> you don't got the Hardys anymore no. at this point. No, man, you don't get the Hardys. You don't got McIntyre, man. You don't even have the miracle Mike Bennett. And, you know, I think Bennett's good in the ring, but I can't really can't. Yeah. His wife's nice to look at, but I can't stand her talking. Like, <laughs> you got to move on with that, man. But, I don't know. And you're right, man. I think about... Uh, Moose, I mean, the first time I saw Moose was in Ring of Honor, and I mean, yeah. he's just, the theme song itself alone doesn't catch me. Moose, Moose, <laughs> Moose, like, dude, come on, bro. If you need to, like, build fake chance with your intro, you need to move on with when that. When I was man. in high school, I watched a porno with a guy named Moose. <laughs> So that's all I think about when I think about Moose. That is too good. Yeah. Man, one move I do think that TNA could move to bring him back to their glory days is bringing Jay Lee. Yeah. Lethal would be dope. I think Lethal would be dope. I think Jeff Jarrett, behind the scenes, as I stated before, can do a good job, man. I mean, if he just just bring in that one draw, what if he beat out Vince McMahon and brought in Kenny Omega? Do you think he could do the right thing with Omega? Omega wouldn't go. But yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean... If, so if you think from a top tier level, if you brought in Omega, who would he fight? Lashley, I can't really see that going very long. Well, they don't have Joe anymore. They don't have a lot of their top guys. But damn, who else is there? I know they're pushing Eddie Edwards and Eddie they're giving Edwards, him the title. Yeah. Uh, Del Rio's in there now. So it's like, I don't really see a great match coming out. I mean, it could be good between uh, Alberto and um, Kenny Omega, maybe. It's just not one I care to see. No. So with their current roster right now, I don't know what they can do to bring people up unless they start signing big names again. And Omega may be a start, but there's no way he's going to carry that company on his back. Mm. Man, and I can't even argue with you on this, man. I don't even think the good grace of Omega, and you know how I feel about this, man. He can't, he can't say what TNA is in, man. I, mean, yeah. I think they're just fully in a rut. I mean, wow, man. So what's your – what's your okay, let's say TNA has an open floor – they can make offers to anybody, WWE, NXT, New Japan, Lucha, whatever. Who's the five guys that you think can get these guys back on the map? Prince Puma. He can okay. bring back the X Division. Prince Puma would go anywhere, yeah. Yeah, but he bring back the X Division. Yeah. Like we've never seen it before. I yeah. mean, think about the old X Division match, yeah. and then think about Prince Puma with his movement. Oh, my True. God. I think my mind will be blown. Yeah, it would be the new era of the uh, X Division. Cage, once again from Lucha. Cage, okay. a big man. I've never seen a stockier. I've never seen a stockier wrestler that can move on his feet like he is a luchador. As crazy as it sounds, bring back Johnny Nitro or uh, Johnny Mundo. Okay, he's not good enough to carry a program by himself, sure. but he does make an amazing heel. Yeah. Uh, he really does get you pissed off. And he could, like, go in there and talk about being over the X Division. He's better than that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'd say you bring back a tag team that you've been missing for a long time, man. LAX. Oh, I love LAX. Homicide and Hernandez. Let's Dude. bring them back. How good would that be? I Yeah. I'd watch it just if LAX came back. Yeah. 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 I mean. So let me ponder it to you, man. What five for you? Mm, all right. So my five would be... I don't know. They'd have to bring back a solid player who could really run the locker room. Okay. So if I had, I mean, if they had to get anybody, I guess they'd have to start with Joe. I mean, they'd have to bring back Joe. They'd have to bring back Joe. I can see that. Get a guy to contend in the top. So, I mean, I think Ambrose would be really good in that promotion only because when he did uh, his deal in, I believe, CFW is John Moxley. 
And some of the shit he's gone through yeah. there, like light bulbs and like taking a like bandsaw out of the head and the same asylum match with, yeah. with abyss perfect yep. matchup right there absolutely that or would crazy be crazy speed either one that's it so ambrose joe i really think that they need to bring somebody in for management mm. um so if i had to pick anybody let's just say hypothetically brock's contracts up Heyman's contracts up Heyman needs to go run tna Brother, you are tickling my fancy right now. I'm right. tuning into your <laughs> program tonight. And I really think that the... Uh, Do you bring Brock? Do you pay Brock millions amounts of money to bring him? Brock, but they don't, have, they don't have Brock money okay. in TNA. Okay. Yeah, that wouldn't work. But I think Gallows and Anderson, as like a newer talent, would actually fit there more than they fit in WWE. Yeah, I agree. I agree. They got that New Japan feel still. And TNA yeah. still got that New Japan it's feel. It's still, still that independent feel. And they're just not really good on the main roster. Like... They're good wrestlers. They're just they don't promo well. They no. don't like it's not the same Very shit. Bland. Yeah. All right, man. So let me go ahead and ask you this: When TNA was hot, what did it do that worked for you? Oh, focus all on the. I mean, you could make the argument that they focus on Jeff Jarrett at the top, but most people. So think about it this way: If WCW had NWO, they had Sting, they had Flair, they had Hogan, they had all those guys at the top, but they showcased those guys with Lucha, right? Think of it the opposite way in TNA. The Jeff Jarrett's and the Stings and and the Steiners and all uh, all those guys showcased what the other guys can do more. I got you. So they were like the icing. So the, all the content was in between, and you know those the top guys were the icing on the cake. They weren't the main attraction. It was everybody in between. Man, and I really agree with you on that. I mean, I know it's crazy, guys. I mean, sometimes we just really agree on things. And I think that's where our connection comes in, man. I think that's exactly what TNA did right at the time, man. I mean, they really promoted the X Division. They yeah. promoted the other wrestlers. But at the same time, it was those superstars who built around those younger wrestlers, which is kind of where I feel the WWE does lack at. I feel that the WWE now uh, just pushes its young talent so much and forgets about the older talent that True. needs there to train that younger talent. Yeah, um, That's true. I mean, and, and you got to think, too, like, it wasn't just the talent. The talent made the show, but it was all the extra shit they peppered in. Like, I could care less about King of the Mountain. I mean, it was like, it was unique enough to pay attention to it. It just was a dumb idea to put a belt on the hook, right? But did the same, the same Asylum match catch you? Yeah, that was great. Um, I really liked the lockdown pay-per-view, which oh, is dope. yeah, man. You know how I feel about that. I love it. The six-sided ring for me, when somebody told me there was a six-sided ring, I was like, you're fucking kidding me. Like, no way I'm not going to watch that yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, and then when I watched it, I was like, this is dope as fuck. Yeah, for I mean, me. oh, man, you can throw them off any road. Oh, my God, man. Yeah. And the moves they would do off there sometimes yeah. is just so amazing. Yeah, but the lethal lockdown was my favorite match of them all. I love the X Division. But I every lethal lockdown I watched was good. Yeah, me too. Me I too. mean, every single one of them. Yeah, I can't really complain, man. I think, and they really promoted their pay per views the way they should have. Like they promoted them along the lines of WWE, but they were better at the time than WWE. So you're talking about Slam Reversary is your SummerSlam, and Bound for Glory is your WrestleMania. Opposite, complete opposite um, area of the year. Yeah, man. So you had something to look forward to, and honestly, I was paying nine ninety nine ninety nine every Wednesday yeah. just to watch the individual pay per views before they were even That's aired right. on cable yeah. TV. I mean, that was phenomenal. It's a way to get their name out. Yeah, yeah. it was the first time I had ever. Uh, they were like, "Hey, Sting!" I'm like, "Oh shoot, man! Like, I haven't seen Sting in ages. Like, I need this. Yeah, like, let me see it, man." And I tune in. I'm like, "Wow, this is really good, man." That's when Chris Wild. What well, uh Chris uh what is his name? Uh Wildcat Chris Wildcat, Harris. Yeah, yeah, Wildcat Chris Harris, man, and uh James Storm yeah. were still the tag team America's yeah. most wanted, man, as we talked about in the previous episode. I mean, Alex Skipper, Christopher Daniels, man, they were doing things right, man. The they young were. AJ, like, wow, man, you're pushing and you're showing us great young talent. I mean, when I first seen AJ in a ring, I was like, Wow, this boy is amazing. Like he has a bright future. The That's only thing true. is, man. They didn't do what they should have. They should have built around AJ Styles. So, which brings me to my next point. I just hit off that I personally feel they didn't build off AJ Styles and make him the main focal point like the WWE did with Cena and kept that afloat. Yeah. What do you think they did that didn't work? Yeah, that that was the first thing is that they lost AJ. Yeah. If the, when they didn't sign AJ, my interest dropped about fifty percent on the show because I was such a huge. They gave us so many good moments of, of AJ. And when he left, it was like, well, the fucking franchise just walked out the door. What are you going to do now? 
And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, Sting's going to hang around for a little bit. Nope, Sting's done. Kurt's going to hang around for a little bit. Kurt's done. Joe's going to hang out. Joe's done. It's like the problem, the biggest problem TNA has is management. And this whole Matt Hardy, Jeff Hardy thing is just proving my point. And that's they don't take care of their talent enough to keep them. Mm, Especially when you got guys like the Hardys who have been to a bigger promotion, who know what a regular check's like. Who know what knows how business is supposed to be run? And extremely loyal. Yeah, and all of a sudden you're just shitting on that because you know you don't have the paperwork together, or you want to keep their their character, or whatever the case may be. It's bullshit. It's disrespectful. So I'm listening to my boy the other day, JD from NY two oh six man, and he specifically is talking about the Hardy, uh, the Hardy TNA situation, and he says from sources that he has. That TNA straight up told the Hardys, okay, go ahead and go to the WWE. Mm. I mean, that right there, man, just hearing that alone, man, just really turns me off from even watching TNA. Like, this is what you're going to do to good talent instead of we're bringing in people like the Moose? Yeah. Come on, man. Like, uh. They have a problem. They have a problem with it, too, because, and you got to figure it's not just that part of management. It's the way they handle it. So, you know, you got guys like Hardys and, and AJ and Samoa, all these guys who had these contracts right and they're like all right it's time to renegotiate what are we gonna do well they basically flake and fuck off on these guys and then treat them like they did nothing for the business Mm -hmm. and and of course you're gonna leave for that it's like oh so you're disrespecting me you you act like i didn't do shit for you and now you're telling me it's fucking me that's doing this that's bullshit man yeah man and then when i look at it man i'm just so what it makes me instantly pop in my mind is Vince McMahon and Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. Just the way that Scott Hall and Kevin Nash left WWE was on positive terms, man. Yeah. Vince was the one who told him, man, wow, go get that money. Like, that's yeah. a lot of money they're offering. Mm-hmm. I can't pay you that. Yeah. I wish the Hardys would have got that respect from TNA. Instead, the Hardys just, hey, bye, we're gone, man. And who's hotter than the Hardys? Other than the Hardys, what would you really tune into t- TNA for right now? Nothing. Exactly, man. And it's just the same, man. It's a travesty to see how these some of some of these greats yeah. who are still great, maybe at the prime of their career now, just get treated, you know? So I think the last bound for glory I watched was when Jeff Hardy went heel oh, yeah. Hogan and all that stuff, yeah. right? Um the one before that or a couple years before that was Joe and Sting, which was by far my favorite <laughs> bound for glory of all time. Um and I actually just rewatched it on YouTube and watching Joe climb up into a private box at the arena and jumping off and landing on like concrete steps was amazing. Fucking incredible. But I mean, you got to think about it. So I went, I told you this last year, I, I actually paid the 50 bucks to to watch bound for glory. I'm like, you know what? Something big might happen uh, with the pending sale, shit like that. I'm going to tune in. I'm going to pay him my money and see what happens. It was fucking garbage. Yeah. Remember, All of it was garbage. I remember you coming up and telling me, man, because I, I didn't pay for it. I didn't want to see it. I mean, it. yeah, they, they proclaimed something big was going to happen. They made it seem that way, man, but that was the biggest letdown ever. And yeah. I just kind of had that feeling, man. Like, I had no hope. And sure enough, man, you came in and like, dude. Well, and then I hear all these, like, fucking marks online talking about, oh, that DJZ match was the greatest shit ever. I'm like, fuck you, dude. You don't know a good match if it slapped you in the face. And I fully agree, man. I mean, that's another piece of talent that I guess I've never touched on before. Is I would like to see what the WWE could do with DJZ. I mean, he's really got some talent. He's out there. He doesn't have a character. That's the thing yeah. that screws him. And he's they got this branded him shitty three different DJ. ways. Yeah. yeah, came out as just uh, Zima yeah. and then DJZ with the freaking uh, hard bodies. Uh, Jesse uh, Jesse Goddard. Or, Jesse yeah. Goddard and uh, yeah, the other. Robbie, 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 Robbie yeah. yeah, man. And then they, then he's on his own right now. He's wearing some ridiculous clothing. Like, yo, just WWE, take him, mold him, man. He's got the talent. It's there, man. I mean, really does show some highlights in some of his matches. Man, anybody wrestling in TNA, you're not getting anywhere. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, TNA is what it is, but I have to say, when I first one I purchased was in 2006. Yeah. And it was on a whim, just like I did any other wrestling. I was like, well, I better check it out to see if it's any good. And it was like LAX versus um, AJ and Christopher Daniels. Okay, yeah. And it was, incidentally, I had just heard about it. So I'm like, I'm going to pay my $20 or whatever some yeah, bullshit yeah, yeah, it was yeah, back yeah. then. And incidentally, that was the first, that was a pay-per-view that Cornette came out and announced that Kurt Angle was a part of TNA. And I 
like blew my fucking mind because Kurt Angle was hot at yeah. the time oh, with geez. the whole ECW angle. Fine, yeah, yeah. Man, my first one, man, I'll never forget. Uh, I just moved down to the Springs with my mother. Yeah, I was a little older in age. Uh, it was about three months before my 21st birthday. Uh, just happened to be scrolling through channels, man. Hit the pay-per-view section, you know? Yeah. Seeing there was some random wrestling on there. I was like, all right, let me go ahead and hit the info. Yeah. And sure enough, man, I'll never forget. It says Sting. Now, I didn't get to see Sting that first night, but it said Sting. So I was like, that's cool, man. And then Glenn Gilberti. I wasn't interested in that. If right. you don't know, that's just going for no. Yeah. Um, and a few other people, man. But I do remember watching a uh, AMW, America's Most Wanted. Yep. Uh, and who did they... F I can't remember... I think they actually might have been fighting, uh, beefing with Team Canada at the time. Yeah, and it really caught my interest, man. And then the six sided rings, like a uh, six sided ring, like you said earlier. There's just a lot of things yeah. about that at that time that really piqued me. Now they're just boo boo. Man. That's back when they did it right. They did the hour long show oh of my Impact. God, yeah, man. I remember when I the first Impact I watched, uh, AJ was uh, beefing with. Um, uh, Kid Cash. Oh yeah, man. yeah. Oh Kid Cash, man. That's a good name yeah. drop right there. But yeah, I forgot all about that cat, man. Underrated wrestler, in my opinion. But that, we'll save that for another day. I mean, we you know, we always got over under. So ultimately, what do you think TNA needs to do to get back? Pray to Jesus. Pray to Jesus. Um, honestly, more realistically, man, you gotta get somebody that's gonna just totally draw interest from not all the fans from WWE, but a majority of them. You gotta go with the biggest signing of your life. CM Punk. Would that do Money. it? Money. Money, I That's guarantee money. you get CM Punk within a year. That whole that whole program is turned around. They would probably put themselves back in the number two role, but right now give the number two role for yeah. me is Lucha. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. They need a big signing. They need a management change. Once, uh, as much as I say Jeff's over, under, whatever, I'm always back and forth on that. Um, he ran the company right, in my opinion, yeah. regardless of if he was uh, world champion 20 times. Yeah. And Dixie really screwed the whole thing up. Yeah, man. I mean, just using daddy's money to just have some fun yeah. and wrestlers. I mean, yeah. but hey, Dixie, if you want to get my number, I'm right here. <laughs> we giving Dixie shout outs yeah. now? Yeah. What's up? You man, she got a lot of money and she is pretty good looking, man. Damn. Yeah, you go. Uh, we talked about going line dancing earlier. Is yeah, that, that's something you do. Exactly, man. Dixie I mean, Carter. I even heard Scott Hall on a shoot just say, "Man, yeah, Dixie Carter." I wish I would have banged her when I had. Oh, I was gonna say. I thought you were gonna say uh, Scott Hall was smashing her out. Or no, whatever. I wish. Then I'd definitely be trying to get her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, then you yeah, know, I you smash could. a razor smash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get that that razor seconds. <laughs> exactly. I hear you. Man, so let's go ahead and move on to something a little little different here, man. Let's stop talking about the depressing stuff in TNA, man. Let's talk about best, man. So, what is your favorite, favorite, the best tag team finisher in your opinion? Doomsday, all day, yeah. every day, Doomsday device. LOD, rocking that LOD. It is so violent, too. And they never got it. Like, how can you perfect the Doomsday device? The only way you could really make it safe is if Animal fell back, like electric chair with the yeah. clothesline. It's the only way, he but he fall. never did. He didn't, yeah. yeah. I mean, these guys took, like, nasty backflips. Yeah. Nowadays, these wrestlers would be injured taking those yeah. falls, man. Yeah. Oh, man, that's a phenomenal one, man. I can't top it, so I'm not even going to try, man. Mine is a little different, fellas, here. Mine, Mr. Mean Dean, is going to be the Outsiders, man. I know it's not a combined finishing move. Sure. I know it doesn't hold the traditional thought of what we think of a tag team finisher. Right. For me, it was the pose they would pose to each other while they're setting right. up the finisher, man. Razor throws out the arm, Kevin throws up the arm, and what happened? You knew what was coming. <laughs> Misery for whoever they were facing, man. <laughs> and let's just be honest, man. Those guys changed, changed the game, man. Like, they did something so amazing. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa! What's up, fellas? Tommy's here. Just... just Hey, man. Sorry. Oh, so now you decide to show up, huh? Now I decide to show up. A little, a little fucking heated. A little heated. Let me let me speak what I got to. You well, know? Okay. Tommy, you got just, the mic. You know, yeah, man. Go. We've been missing you, know, you bro. Yeah, we speak. do this shit every yeah, day. Go. It's all God you, buddy. damn. Just missed you guys, too. But I just, going back, listening to some, the promos, you know, and talking about blood. Blood and wrestling, you know. And I just getting full on heated. So I'm, wait, Tommy, yeah, you're pissed about blood now? I'm pissed at the lack of blood, man. Come on. It's, it's fucking wrestling. It's the PG era has ruined what is naturally like it's a violent sport but tell me come on man man come our kids watch this shit man you gotta <laughs> see blood sooner or later like come on you're gonna watch you're gonna let your kid you're gonna let your kid watch fucking ufc 
and have natural blood. Let them watch wrestling, man. Come on, you you can't tell me when. All right, a couple weeks ago, we we're watching the the Festival of Friendship with Jericho and Kevin Owens, the man, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens turns on him, throws him through a fucking TV. Not a scratch on him, no man. blood. I don't know about you, but if I get thrown through a TV, I'm gonna have blood. I don't know about JG, but he's gonna have blood. I mean, come on, you hit someone with a chair. Well, they don't do chair shots no more. Jesus Christ. You can't hit someone with a fucking chair. There was a time back, what, eight, nine, ten years ago, it was fucking, oh, God, I'm so heated, I can't even keep my mind straight. Edge and Christian, they would do the concerto. Every fucking week, you would see a chair shot. Now, only chair shot you see is when someone sits down and hits it too hard. Jesus Christ. I mean, I love watching wrestling, but little, little fucking reality, too. Yeah, we all know it's sports entertainment. Entertain me and whack someone in the fucking head with a chair. Get a little blood. Jesus Christ. Fuck, Dude, guys. I sorry, I'm, sorry, I missed the whole. I bet. I bet the show was amazing. That's real. But, you know what? I had to. Couldn't. Couldn't make it on time, guys. Hey, couldn't do it. That's. Fine. I mean, we get it, bud. We. Jesus. Fuck we. We've all gone heat on on thing. I. I agree with you. That chair shit is bullshit. I get like it's the whole Chris Benoit killed everybody. Now fucking allegedly. everybody has a concussion. Like in wrestling. Did you say allegedly? <laughs> allegedly. No proof yet. It could have been Kevin Sullivan. We don't know. Whoa. Hey, whoa. whoa. <laughs> no. Hey, now that is a great topic. We're going to save that for another day, Tommy, <laughs> yeah. because that's an hour long uh, special right yeah, there. Yeah, that's a, that's a documentary right yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. I, I want to hit on that as well. But, brother, I can't hate on you, man. I'm just glad to see you're safe. Glad to see you're here, man. Much and right. I hate the fucking no blood, too. Let's no get blood. back to how it really was. Just like WrestleMania, well, when we watch Undertaker and Lesnar, WrestleMania. You know what's weird to me? I agree with you, Tommy. What's strange to me is how they talk about, no, we don't want people to bleed, but Brock's going out there and opening Randy up the old-fashioned way. Yeah. That's worse to me right. than blading. Like, I don't get it. And I'm sorry, man. That was the highlight of SummerSlam, so imagine what it could do if they bring all that back. The most blood we've seen lately on WWE programming... Is Charlotte's was, period? Oh, sorry. Was that too soon? <laughs> never I, think too I was soon. thinking Bailey's. Never, never too soon. Charlotte, for shout out. Hashtag period. <laughs> It's a bloody day. Love you, but man. no, seeing Bill Goldberg knock himself fucking retarded on a goddamn wall. That's true. Yeah. That's and then true. and now he's, he's done. Yeah. yeah. And then they censor the fucking shit out on the internet. Yeah. Like you went to WWE.com the next day, there was no blood. No. God damn it. No, we what do you guys blood. finish this fucking shit off? I'm heated, dude. Brother, Jesus. well, hey man, I'm just glad you're here, man. We were worried to hell where the hell you were, but hey man. Thank you for another great night, guys. We can't thank you enough, man. This is one month, one week counting, guys, and we couldn't do it without you, man. Big shout out to the TLP fan club. Outside of this, we got Tommy Guns, thank you, Mr. Mean Dean, Jigga, and JG signing out, and we'll see you next time. Out.